When you ask people to name one thing they remember especially well about Darkest Dungeon, most people will definitely answer the narrator. Grievous injury, palpable fear. But did you know that he wasn't even planned to be in the full game? Before I dive deeper, I'll give a quick rundown of the game and its elements, just to get a feel for what kind of game it is. Impressive. Darkest Dungeon is a turn-based dungeon crawler RPG by Red Hook Studios. It has strong roguelike elements such as permadeath and a ruthless autosave system. It's both loved and hated for being a difficult and challenging game. The premise of the game is to explore the surrounding areas of your hamlet while slowly working your way to the darkest dungeon itself, located beneath your ancestors' old mansion. First, you will assemble a team of heroes. They will be delivered daily on a silver platter to you by a stagecoach. Then you'll go searching for loot in different areas, and you'll have to fight a lot of different Lovecrafting creatures. You'll meet everything from fanatic cultists and fish people to the grotesque swine king it is a travesty a blundering and the loot hoarding corvid when trekking through the maps you'll have a chance of encountering other horrifying mini bosses such as the cosmic shambler and the collector inspired by lovecraft's hustler cthulhu's half brother and once you think you're doing good you'll probably meet one of these guys the game is heavily Lovecraft inspired. Cosmic horror is a constant theme in the game, and the further you progress in the game, the more the world around you starts to unravel and reveal itself. A staple of the game is the stress mechanic. Your heroes are susceptible to the stress of delving into dungeons filled with monsters. And if you don't tend to your heroes' well-being, they will eventually get afflicted with different negative effects. These include paranoia, abusiveness, Irrationality, and many others. And now, let's talk about the narrator. His deep and gritty voice is extremely memorable. Throughout the game, he describes different happenings and events. For example, when your heroes receive stress attacks, the abyss returns even the boldest gaze. When the enemy lands a critical hit, ears, blurred vision, the end approaches. Or when setting off a trap. Curious is the trap maker's art, his efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. To a certain degree, he dictates the mood of events happening in the game. Uh, I'm Tyler Sigmund, I'm the co founder, co president, design director. Um, Trash man, I don't know, whatever. It's a small company, so we all do a lot of things. Uh, Red Hook Studios. Um. At a GDC game developers conference, Red Hook Studios' Tyler Sigmund mentions how they ended up with the voice of Wayne June in the game as a core element. They had heard his amazing audiobook readings of the Lovecraft books, which I will tell you how you can listen to for free later in the video. Originally, they only intended for him to star in the trailer for the game. But after hearing his readings, they quickly realized how well his voice fit the game. And here's what Sigmund said after hearing June's readings. Uh, we, we brought this narrator in for our announcement trailer. I don't think at that point we had even thought about using one in the game. But he was so amazing. Uh, Chris had found these Lovecraft audiobooks read by Wayne June. We contacted Wayne June, got him to read for a trailer. And it was just like, okay, he's in the game. We have to put him in the game. There's, there's no way we can't. Um, and he is absolutely right. In a way, June's lines also add to the gameplay elements. Having him give a short description of an event happening when you return to the hamlet makes for a more interesting bit of lore. Instead of the screen simply reading, this week you get a free upgrade. There will be no sleep tonight. The wild shouts and frantic drumming will see to that. This also goes for minor happenings in the dungeons, such as when looting a sack of food or when your torch gets extinguished. The darkness holds much worse than hair trickery and boogeyman. Instead of just getting the negative effects of exploring without a torchlight, you get an added layer of feel to the scene happening. 
Another good example of how the narrator is adding to the game's design is when you try to flee a battle, which is something only done when things are going extremely bad, only to be denied and then hearing No chance for egress. Will this be a massacre? really accentuates the desperation you feel when you realize you might lose all your heroes. Many of the examples shown so far have been either negative happenings or rather mundane events like town events. But in a game like this, where the lows are plentiful and often devastating, the highs are extremely rewarding. Having the narrator exclaim when you land that needed critical hit which just saved your healer is exhilarating. But the absolute highest point in the game is undoubtedly when a run is going bad and the hero is about to be afflicted, dooming your run even more and then turning out virtues. Many fall in the face of chaos, but not this one. Not today. You see, there's a small chance your hero will become virtuous, where they power on even when reaching the stress threshold where affliction usually would set in. And this can turn the tide of a battle. The hero can no longer get afflicted, and they will boost your other party members in different ways. Here you can see my man-at-arms resisting being dragged to the depths by the enemy because of him becoming stalwart, giving me a great chance in this fight. And the booming voice which accompanies this is absolutely thrilling, and makes good gameplay shine even brighter. The narrator could be compared to a dungeon master in Dungeons & Dragons. Everything that's happening is being described by a person that has all the information. So even if we were to remove the interface showing the stress level and health of your heroes, you would still get a gauge on how they're doing. In the game, you're getting the brunt of your information on screen, visually. All the extra depth comes from the narrations. You clearly understand that a hero becomes fearful or paranoid, but having the narrator say The walls close in, the shadows whisper of conspiracy adds another layer of information and on how the hero is losing his or her mind. Other games have also used a voiceover like this, but not to the same extent that Darkest Dungeon utilizes it. For example, classic FPS games such as Quake and Unreal Tournament. Or Halo's killstreaks. However, most games would not benefit much from a Darkest Dungeon style narrator. It might even detract from the game experience. Try to imagine Faster Than Light, which has an isolated atmosphere, with a narrator describing that whole breach which just happened. Such a terrible assault cannot be left unanswered. Even another game with a more similar tone to Darkest Dungeon, such as Dark Souls, would suffer from having a narrator. Even while being in the same ballpark when it comes to atmosphere, a narrator is not at all needed here, it feels out of place. In Darkest Dungeon, however, the narration complements and enriches the experience tenfold. Red Hook Studios made, in my opinion, one of the best design choices in the game by adding the voice of Wayne June, making it a gloomy, memorable and just all around amazing experience. The narrator is essentially your only constant companion through the game, and when your heroes die time and again, the narrator will be there to make those losses even more bitter and impactful. More dust, more ashes, more disappointment. 